Welcome back. We're going to be looking in this video at the insertion sort. We're going to jump straight in and start talking about the theory behind it before moving on to the pseudocode and dry running. We're going to jump straight in and talk about the theory behind it. So the insertion sort itself is a simple sorting algorithm that builds a final sorted array or a list one item at a time as it goes. The insertion sort iterates consuming one input element at each repetition and growing a sorted output list as it goes, making it faster than the bubble sort. At each iteration, the insertion sort removes one element from the data inputted, finds the location within the sorted list, and inserts it in the correct location. And this is done until no elements in the list remain to be sorted. So let's have a look at an example. Here is a standard list of six elements. First thing we do is look at the second element which is 1 in this case. We compare it with the previous element to 1, which is 8. 8 is greater than 1, so we make a swap. Then we look at the third element, which is 7. That's compared to 8, and 7 is less than 8, so what we do is we make a swap there. 7 is compared to 1, and because 7 is greater than 1, we know that it should be on the right-hand side, and we insert it there. The key to this algorithm is looking and saying, is 7 greater than 1 and less than 8. If it is, it goes in between those two. Then we look at the fourth element, which is number 4. That's compared to 8, so we have to make a swap because 8 is greater than 4, 7 is greater than 4, and 1 is less than 4, so it has to be inserted in the second position. We then take 3 and compare it with 8. A swap has to be made. We compare it with 7. A swap has to be made again, and then we compare it with 4. 3 is still less than 4, so we have to make a swap. Then 3 is greater than 1, so we put it in its rightful place. Last element then is checked. 6 is less than 8. It's also less than 7, but it is greater than 4, so it gets put in the fourth position. So you can see now that the insertion sort sorts the list as it goes. It makes sure that the numbers are placed in the correct position upon each iteration. So the next thing to do now then is look at the pseudocode. This again is an exam question and it is looking at an array of size 0 to 3. However, I'm going to use the example that I just used to show you what we do in pseudocode. I've got a number of variables. I've got i as an integer, j as an integer, and n as an integer. And I've got current item and also inserted. The first line of code that requires some action is line number 11. Set n to equal the upper bound of my array. So that's the total number of elements in the array itself. So I've got six elements in there, so I set n to equal six. The next thing on line 13 is a for loop. For i equals one, so I set i to equal the value of one, to n minus one. So this is saying loop from one to n minus one, so which is five. That should take me from the second element all the way up to the last element in my list. So as we enter inside the for loop itself, we're going to set the current item to equal my array at position of i. i is 1, so in my array at the position of 1 is the value 1. So current item is assigned 1. Then we set inserted to equal false, and then we set j to equal the value of i minus 1. i is 1, minus 1 is 0. So j gets the value of 0. Then we've got a do while loop. So with a do while loop, we look at the do and then we jump to the while to evaluate the condition. j is greater than or equal to 0 and inserted equals false. So j is currently 0, which is greater than or equal to 0 and inserted is currently set to false. Both of those conditions are true. So in order for those to enter, into the loop, both conditions have to be true because we've got a logical operator, which is AND. So we enter inside and we say my array at j plus 1 is given the value of my array at j. So j is 0 plus 1 is 1. So we're looking to replace the element at position 1. And we give it the position of j. j is 0, so the number 8 is going to overwrite whatever is in the array at the position of 1. Then j is decremented by 1, so it was 0. I take 1 from that, it gives me minus 1. 
Then my array at j plus 1, so minus 1 plus 1 gets us back to 0, is given the value of current item. I've got 1 in the current item, so I'll put 1 in the position of 0. Now I appreciate that this might be quite confusing. You can always go back and have another look, go through it in slow motion, step by step, until you understand it. My next step now is once I finish the selection statement is to jump back to the do while. So I go back and compare the condition again this time. J has changed to minus one. So minus one is greater than or equal to zero. Now that's false. And if that's false, then it doesn't matter what the other condition is, I'm gonna fail this loop. So I break out the loop and I increment I. So I is incremented to two. And then I'm back up to line number 14. I'm going to set the current item to equal my array at the position of i. My array at position of i is number 7. So current item is now number 7. I set the inserted value to false, which it already is. And I set j to equal i minus 1. i is 2. Minus 1 from that gives me 1. So j is set to 1. Then I go to my while loop again. And I say j, which has the current value of 1, is greater than or equal to 0. That's true. And inserted equals false. That's also true. So both conditions are true. So I go inside my do while loop. And I say if the current item, which is 7, is less than my array at position of j, which is 8. That's true. So then I go inside and say my array at the position of j plus 1 is assigned the value of my array at the position of j. As you can see there, seven was replaced with eight, and I've actually got two eight values in my array now. The next thing to do is to decrement j. j had a value of one, and I'm gonna decrement that down by one to zero. And then my array at j plus one, so zero plus one, so my array at position one, is given the value of current item. So seven is placed into position one in my array. Once I've done that, it's time to reevaluate my while condition. So j this time is zero. So is zero greater than or equal to zero? Yes, it is. And is inserted equal to false? Yes, it is. So both of those conditions are true. So I go back inside my while loop and I carry out my selection statement. If my current item, which is still seven, is less than my array at position j, now j is changed to zero, so I look in my array position zero and it gives me one. Seven is not less than one. So it fails that condition. And we run line number 24 stating that inserted equals true. So we change our inserted variable to true. Now we head back over to the while loop and evaluate the condition on line 26. So we say j is zero still. Is that greater than or equal to zero? Yes, it is. And is inserted equal to false? Well, no, it's not because inserted has just changed to true. So we have a true and a false condition. And with the and logical operator, that gets us false overall. So we actually break out the loop. And that means we have to increment i now because we're on line 28. So next i, we increment that and go back up to line 13. i becomes 3. Inside the for loop now, we set the current item to equal my array at the position of i. i is 3, so the value at position number 3 is 4. So we set the current item to equal four. The next thing we do is we set inserted to equal false, and then we set j to equal i, which is three, minus one, which gives us two. So j is set to the value of two. We go to our do while loop and we evaluate the condition. j, which is two, is that greater than or equal to zero? Yes, it is. And is inserted equals false? Yes, it is. So we go inside the selection statement, now, and we look at it and we say, okay, if current item, which is four, if that's less than eight, then my array at position j plus one, so that's three, is given the value of my array at j, which is number eight. Once that happens, we've got to decrement j from two to one, and then my array at the position of j plus one, so one plus one is two, is given the value of current item, which is four. Drop down to the while loop, and run the condition. J is now one. Is one greater than or equal to zero? Yes, it is. And is inserted false? Yes, it is. So both of those conditions passed. So back up to line 19 to run the if statement. If current item, which is four, is less than 
my array at position j, so j is 1, so that's 7, is 4 less than 7? Yes, it is. So my array at j plus 1, which is 2, is given the value of my array at j. So 7 overwrites 4. Decrement j from 1 down to 0. Then my array at j plus 1 is given the value of 4. So in my array, the index position 1 gets the value of 4. So we swap them two numbers round. And again, we evaluate the while loop. J now is 0. Is 0 greater than or equal to 0? Yes, it is. It's equal to it. And is inserted equals false? Yes, it is. So both of those conditions pass again. Here we go to the if statement and say if the current item, which is currently 4, is less than my array at J, which gives us the value of 1, that is false. So we skip over that and we set the inserted value to equal true. Then when we come to then when we come to evaluate the while loop, j is still 0, so 0 is still equal, or greater than or equal to 0, should I say, and inserted is now true, not false. So we fail that condition, and then we have to increment i. So i is incremented to 4, and we set the current item to equal my array at the position of i. i is now 4, so that means the current item is set to 3, and then we set inserted to false, and then j is given the value of i minus 1. So j is given the value of 3, and then we go and evaluate the while condition. While j is greater than or equal to 0 and inserted equals false, well both of those conditions are true. So we go inside and we say if the current item, which is 3, is less than my array at j, which is 8, and that's true. So what we do is then we swap 3 and 8 round and decrement j. Back to the while condition, we say j, which is now 2, is greater than or equal to 0, it is, and inserted equals false, that is also true again. So we're back to the selection statement and we say current item is 3. If that's less than 7, then we need to do another swap. So 3 is less than 7, so what we do is we swap those two numbers around and decrement j again. Back to the while. While j, which is now 1, is greater than or equal to 0 and inserted equals false. Both of those conditions are true. So again, we're back at the selection statement comparing 3 to see if it's less than 4. 3 is less than 4. So again, we make a swap with those numbers and decrement j again. Compare the while loop condition. While j, which is 0, is greater than or equal to 0 and inserted equals false. That's true again. So now we go back up to the selection statement again and we say if current item, which is 3, is less than my array at position j, which is 1. Now we fail that condition because 3 is not less than 1. So we change inserted to equals true. Once we've done that, we compare the while for a final time. We say while j which is 0, is greater than or equal to 0, which is true, and inserted equals false. Now, inserted is not false, it's true, so we fail that condition. We break out the while loop and increment i. i becomes 5, and we now set the current item to equal my array at i, so current item becomes 6. Inserted is set to false, and j becomes i, which is 5, minus 1. So j is set to 4. We go to the while loop. We compare the condition. Is 4 greater than or equal to 0? Yes, it is. And is inserted equals false? Yes, it is. So we go to the selection statement. The current item, which is 6, is less than 8. Then we need to make a swap. So it is true. So we swap them round and decrement j. Back to the while condition. While j, which is now 3, is less than or equal to 0 and inserted is false. That's true. We go back to the selection statement again. If 6 is less than 7, that's true. We make another swap. So then two numbers swap over and we decrement j to 2. Back to the while loop again. While 2 is greater than or equal to 0, which is true, and false is true. So it's true again. Back up to the selection statement again and compare 6 and 4. 
6 is not less than 4, so we actually fail that condition, and we set inserted to equal true. Back to the while condition, while j, which is 2, is greater than or equal to 0, and inserted equals false, we fail that condition. So overall, it's false. So we break out the while loop, and we increment i again. So we've reached the end of our for loop, and if you look at the array, the array says now 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, we've got a sorted array. Now this is an awful lot of information to take on board and I'd recommend going back and taking your time to go through that slowly. The only thing we need to consider now is the best and worst case scenario of the insertion sort. Best case scenario for insertion sort to run is if the input list or the array is mostly already sorted. This minimizes the number of swaps that have to be made. On the other hand, the worst case scenario for the insertion sort will occur when the input list is in the opposite order that you need. That maximizes the number of swaps made and obviously that impacts the time taken to complete the sort itself. So that's a quick look at the insertion sort. If you've got any questions, please do feel free to comment and I'll see you again very soon.